This fish lives in total darkness in the abysmal sea, found worldwide below the depths of 300 meters in the bathypelagic zone, the anglerfish thrives. There are 160 recognized species among 11 families. The anglerfish falls in the order Lophiforms and suborder Ceratoidae. Scientists were baffled that all captured the anglerfish were females. It wasn't until recent years that scientists noticed the odd growths on their bodies. They discovered that these growths were actually the male species. The species is characterized by a sexual dimorphism, a distinct difference in size or appearance between the sexes, as well as the sexual organs themselves. Males run generally 6 to 10 millimeters, whereas females can be 60 times that length. Females can also be half a million times as heavy as the males, resulting in dwarfed males. Generally, free-living males have soft, plump bodies, naked, partially pigmented skin, and weak muscles. The presence of these characteristics suggests a passive way of life. Most males of this species have many specialized features to adapt to poorly lit environments, such as well-developed eyes, huge nostrils, and a specialized mouth. The mouth has pincer-like denticles at anterior tips of the jaw. These allow a male to securely fasten itself to its mate. Attachment of the males can be either temporary or permanent. Evidence supports that this sexual parasitism has evolved at least three times, but it is possible that it has evolved up to five or more within this suborder. These adaptations allow the males to find its mate through olfactory methods, visual cues, or a combination of both. Males are able to recognize a female through pheromones she releases in still waters. Even with the male's well-developed eyes, he still requires assistance from the female. The female either has an elysium or an esca. The elysium is a modified dorsal fin, whereas the esca is a fleshy growth. Despite this difference, both structures have the ability to glow. Males who only temporarily attach have well-developed gonads compared to those permanently attach themselves to the female. Males who permanently attach never mature unless they are in a parasitic association with the female. There are three types of reproductive strategies observed within these species, obligatory parasitism, facultative parasitism, and temporary non-parasitic attachment. Facultative parasitism occurs in males that attach themselves to females regardless of sexual readiness, whereas temporary non-parasitic attachment occurs when ma mature sexual males attach to a female without fusion of either male or female tissue. These differentiations are visible in the male jaw apparatus structures. For example, males with facultative or temporary attachment exhibit well-developed jaw apparatuses that are capable of capturing prey, whereas obligate parasitic males have an unsuited mouth for prey capture and an undeveloped elementary canal. Therefore, obligatory parasitic males must find a mate for long-term survival. As previously mentioned in facultative parasitism, the male will attach itself to a female regardless of sexual readiness, and he will stay attached until the female is ready to spawn. However, if the male remains attached to the female for too long, he runs a greater risk of permanently fusing to the female. In temporary non-parasitic attachment, the male is capable of temporarily attaching to the female without any fusion of tissue. It is presumed that this occurs with the aid of highly specialized tooth, a denticular apparatus, on the tip of the snout and chin. Once fertilization is complete, the male will release the female in search of a new mate. It has been suggested that temporary parasitic males become larger after having more parasitic encounters. Males that exhibit obligatory parasitism must permanently attach themselves to females for survival. In fact, if an obligatory parasitic male fails to find a mate within a few months of his life, he will die. Attachment of the male and female initiates metamorphosis of the two bodies. Males discharge an enzyme that disintegrates the skin of his mouth and the female skin, allowing their tissue to fuse. Their tissue and circulatory system connect and become one. 
Since the male becomes permanently fused to the female, there is no longer a need for specialized adaptations. This results in a significant regression in eye size and loss of the olfactory organ. The male cannot acquire nutrients on his own and thus becomes fully dependent on the female, obtaining his nourishment through her blood. The permanently attached male will only survive for as long as the female lives. This process also allows the female to become a self-fertilizing hermaphrodite. Once a female is found, the male will bite down on her skin using two separate moving median bones, or otherwise known as the upper and lower jaw denticles. Males generally attach themselves upside down and facing forward, and almost always on the ventral midline of the belly, somewhat anterior to the anus. However, there are always exceptions to these rules. For example, this does not apply to Cryptopsaurus, Haplophrene, and Photocornus which are often found almost anywhere on the head and body and can be oriented in any direction. Females can never become pregnant until stimulated by the attachment of a male. Fertilization occurs when the male ejects his sperm inside the female. However, it is believed that the female controls the delivery of sperm through a hormone-mediated process. Presumably, she can coordinate the moment she ejects her eggs from the body. Eggs released are contained in large oil beads, giving them buoyancy to float to the surface of the ocean. It is possible that these incredible mating strategies developed to compensate for the harsh environment and relatively low density of females in deep sea environments.